guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Trans Atheist. Today, we're going to be discussing a situation out of Elida, Ohio. So let's start with a little bit of background information. So Elida is a small village in northwestern Ohio. It's in Allen County and part of the Lima metropolitan area. So while Lima is a little less Republican, the area, generally speaking, is still a solidly red part of Ohio. It's very difficult for Democrats to win elections in this area, but we keep right on trying. But anyway, I wanted to start out with how I got involved in this incredibly bigoted situation. So while on my way to work, I, was, I stopped off at a small convenience store to pick up an energy drink. When I pulled into the parking lot, I saw a man in front of the store sitting on a golf cart talking to another gentleman. Uh, I was hopeful that I would be able to slip on by and just go in, get what I needed, and get out. But as I started walking up, the man, the one man left, leaving only Mr. Golf Cart Guy. Now, the guy in the golf cart handed me a flyer, which I'm going to put a photo of that flyer up on the screen. You'll see it kind of right over there. Um, I glanced down at it, and I saw that it was about the scuffle that's been going on at Elida Schools, which I had recently seen a news article about. So he looked at me, and he handed me this flyer, and he said, Hope you'll come out for the meeting. And I replied, oh, I'll be there, but I'll be on the other side of the issue. He kind of stuttered in response to that, but then said a thank you, ma'am. And I got to admit, I got a little bit of a giggle out of his comment, because you could pretty well tell this group in general that he was the type of person that would purposefully misgender a trans person if he had the opportunity. And in this moment, he had unknowingly correctly gendered a trans person. From there, I reached out to some friends in the community, and along with them and my husband, we went to the meeting. So I planned on recording the full meeting, and that way we could use it here. But in all honesty, the environment was so hostile that I decided not to do that. Um, I was able to find some snippets of various speakers um, online, and I'll share those probably in another video. I'll go through um, kind of the speeches and the few that I do have and break those down. As I, and as I find any more speeches, I'll kind of let you know. Um, so um, to call this a meeting would be a bit glamorizing of the reality. As I said in another video, I'll respond to a lot of the transphobic comments that were made. But throughout the meeting, we heard speaker after speaker, about 20 in total, and only three uh, were actually in support of the trans student. I had signed up to speak. I was not selected to speak. However, one member of our group did, thankfully. There was a lot of yelling at board members from the audience, and speaker after speaker invoked religion as the motivation for their bigotry and as a type of justification. Now, it would be hard to argue that this was about anything other than a majority Christian community that is pushing for a theocratic control of their local school system. At the end of the public comment, or yelling match probably more appropriately, um, the board voted in favor of a resolution which basically just punted the whole situation. It said that it was a matter outside of their control and that they felt they had to follow the law. And basically, if the public wanted something different, they needed to lobby lawmakers in order to change it. And while the board members never said whether they personally supported the policy, I have heard from some people... Um, that know these board members, that they actually share, many of them at least, actually share the same bigoted positions of those in the audience. That they simply voted this way because they felt their hands were tied. Now, I can't confirm that, uh, but given that information, I'm not exactly eager to congratulate the board for doing the right thing because it sounds as if they would have happily done the wrong thing 
if they felt they had an opportunity to do so. So naturally, that outcome wasn't a welcome decision by most in the audience as they voiced their support for losing funding, if necessary, in order to discriminate against trans students. Yes, they literally said they would rather have school programs shut down than have to support a trans student's rights. At the end of the meeting, we cautiously made our way out and headed back home. And honestly, it took me a while to process everything that, I ha that happened. And I still think I'm kind of trying to get myself in the right headspace. The hatred in that room was so thick and palpable that it was almost unbearable. And to sit in a room full of people that are saying the most despicable things about people just like you is really hard to hear. It honestly made me think about those trans students and how hard it must be to have the adults in their lives, teachers in some cases, members of the community, parents of, of their fellow classmates, coming up and saying all manner of horrible things about you. Everything from that this was a social contagion, that they weren't really trans, uh, that, you know, it's just people are jumping on a bandwagon, basically, that it was demonic, that it was evil. I mean, that's a lot to take in. One of the students did reach out to, reach out to us afterwards um, and let us know that they appreciated seeing some support there. I was wearing this in the audience, so I wasn't exactly blending in. Um, but it was definitely hard to kind of handle. Now, the group that's doing all this have called themselves Elida Parents Against Bathroom Policy. Uh, they have a Facebook group. Anybody who attempts to get in that group that doesn't see exactly eye to eye with them, you're going to be booted out and blocked, as I was. Um, so... You know, they're also working in partnership with an anti-vax doctor and his group in the area called the Lima Community for Medical Freedom. And um, you also will see some of the other people involved in this. Um, I have a video out of the first planning meeting that they had, which was at the church on Allentown. Um, I'll post a photo kind of of all that, and you can go look up the video to see the full context of the speech. This is really a vile movement, and we need to get as much attention to it as possible. Again, this is going to be a multi-part series. In this part, I just wanted to kind of give you guys some background on what's going on, uh, but it was a very rough situation to have to sit through. I can't imagine what it must have been like for trans students in the audience or trans students that learned about this later. The newspapers are in a lot of ways presenting this like there was a difference of opinion. That was not what we saw. We did not see some civilized discussion about a difference of opinion. We saw the makings of the equivalent of a lynch mob. We saw a man who got up in front and part of his speech was basically threatening the female members of the school board to expose his genitals to see how they liked it. That was the type of mentality. Um, everything was religious this. I won't give up my religion or some comments that we've seen um, in private messages and conversations. They've referred to the trans student as that little a-hole, and this is supposed to be a Christian group. Um, this is a very, very vile group. I can't say that we're going to win this battle in the long run. This is a very hard right area. The possibility is that we may lose it, but that doesn't mean we can stop fighting. Every one of those kids out there need to see that there are adults, both trans and cis, that are willing to stand up for their rights, and that is exactly what we are trying to do. So, aside from this program as the trans atheist, I want to encourage any people that are in northwestern Ohio, 
um, or elsewhere if you want to get involved, um, to look us up on Facebook. The organization is Northwestern Ohio Trans Advocacy. Join. We'll keep you posted on information as we get it. Things that kind of, not only with the Elida situation, but things that apply to what's going on in Ohio on the trans right front in general. Um, so, um, as I've said, if you know this program, it is called The Trans Atheist. Please do not let that keep you from uh, looking at the uh, Northwestern Ohio Trans Advocacy page. Our page is not dedicated to atheism. I cover some of those topics um, because my channel is about the convergence of church-state separation and trans rights. And unfortunately, those do come into play. But we welcome all people who are interested in equality and supporting one another. Be you an atheist, a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, a pagan, we don't care. We're more about the things that unite us than the things that divide us. So while we can discuss these religious issues and come to differing positions, hopefully we will share in common this idea that all people are created equal, that we have rights, that our rights are not up for debate among a bigoted religious minority group, religious majority group in this case in the community, that want to take those away. So please look at joining us. Please continue to watch the videos. Continue to give me ideas. You'll see more coming out about this as I can get it put together. And again, thank you all for everything. Until the next episode of The Trans Atheist, my name is Ariane, and thank you very much for watching. By the way, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. I did have an earlier video that they were trying to thumbs down to kind of screw up the algorithm, so we can use all the support we can get. Thank you. Bye-bye.